Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to another Walking Dead video. So here's my review for the season finale of Daryl Dixon. This was honestly a really fantastic episode. Obviously, everyone's going to be talking about the ending scene, which makes a lot of sense, but there's actually a quite a moment throughout the episode that I found just really overwhelming, honestly, in terms of just Daryl as a character, and I think it's one of the best, one of the best episodes I've ever seen in terms of uh, Daryl Dixon's story. So uh, yeah, before we go any further, obviously be, be careful for spoilers, which I'm sure you guys are all aware about. I'm sure a lot of you guys have already watched the episode and definitely make sure to go follow me on Twitch. I will be live there later on today and we can talk about Daryl Dixon entirely as a show and uh, yeah, all of that because obviously there is so much to break down with this show. So yeah, I want to talk about it live and talk about really all of season one. So I will be doing like a season one review. I will do a rankings, like a top six, I guess, rankings of uh, season one. And uh, obviously I will do a season two video and I'll break down the teaser trailer and all that because obviously that was sort of released and it makes sense now, like now looking at season two i'm uh i'm very hyped just because obviously i've watched episode one now so i see where everything ends and uh i'm very interested in a few characters specifically so this episode again like i said focuses a lot on daryl dixon as a as a character obviously the show's about him but like this one specifically out of the six episodes really focused on him just his backstory and who he is and there is so much about this episode that I just love so much. Specifically, it was the grandfather stuff. Now, Daryl's grandfather, obviously, uh, you know, hasn't really been talked about throughout the entire series. We've heard a lot about his father um, and just sort of the upbringing he had. And in this episode early on when Daryl's working on that car, you know, we hear of Daryl's grandfather. He talks about his grandfather, said he fought in the war, but didn't really make it far. It was just sort of on the beach. And I mean, obviously, I think a lot of us know like what he's referencing there. And he didn't really think that he was much of a hero, this and that. I, I think that it's just more of Daryl being angry with his family overall because he seemed to have, like, this moment where he he kind of broke down a little bit, right? Where, where he saw his grandfather's grave later on in the episode. And I think it just brought up a lot of emotions because it's just like, you know, for him, it's like it all started because of you, right? But it also wasn't really his fault. You know, he fought in the war. There is so much that, you know, I think should be respected there. And I think Daryl realized that in that moment. And I think he just got really emotional. I think it's just he's feeling a lot of mixed feelings, anger sadness and just like happiness too in a way because he found his grave right like there's so much there that i think is just uh i mean first of all the fact that they're on the same beach i think it's just kind of insane it's actually really really cool i mean first of all like actually when you really look at it like the episode does start off with uh we do see daryl's grandfather actually we see him on the beach it was during world war ii and obviously he dies there and he's actually like he has like dog tags around his neck and i'm kind of curious about that because i remember merle i i think having some a long time ago so i wonder if that's what that was if that was sort of a connection to that if so that is so cool that is such an awesome thing to throw in there but uh i can't remember exactly as of now i probably should have googled it before i did my review but whatever his grandfather and what that means in general in terms of daryl's overall personal story i think is just insane because daryl you know his grandfather left and left his grandmother while she was pregnant and then his father left and wasn't around and daryl was just sort of forced to do kind of whatever and then you know now daryl's grown up and he kind of is becoming like his father and i don't want to say his grandfather because his grandfather fought in the war right so it wasn't it was just sort of a tr tragic event that caused another tragic event that caused obviously daryl kind of thing right and his upbringing so like yeah i don't want to say his grandfather was necessarily you know uh daryl's father it was definitely very different but you know daryl was starting to become a lot like his father if you think about in episode five when he's like yelling at laurent like it's it's you know that we see these traits where it's like he just that's all he kind of knew right he, that's all he knows and he catches himself there which i really liked but in this episode, that's sort of something that they explore, too, is, like, he wants to go back home. And so there's this whole thing of, like, you know, and Isabel says that a lot, too. Like, Laurent is is kind of, like, he's changing and, you know, he's never really had a father figure like you in his life. I mean, they don't say that specifically, but no, you know, they do mention that Quinn's not his father. There's a lot of hints that, basically, Daryl seems to be more of a father figure to Laurent more than anyone else was. And it's actually really incredible when you really think of the fact that, you know, Daryl just, he wrestled with this idea. And I know I'm talking about the episode sort of overall, but I thought it would be important to sort of focus on, like, this one aspect to it, because this was sort of the theme of the episode. And uh, I love the ending, and we'll talk about the ending, I guess, in a second. That's the part I will say for the ending, but I think the ending, based off of what this episode was, or, like, you know, like, was about, 
just makes so much sense. And Daryl actually fought against those odds and he's becoming his own person. And he's actually doing something really incredible here. So yeah, crazy. But this episode does begin with the Varian Walker fight and the Varian Walker fight went as I was sort of expecting. And I love the fact that it took a few minutes to actually kill this Walker. Like again, if this was a normal Walker, Daryl would have killed the Walker so fast. But this walker wasn't normal and the walker just like went after them and he had a hard time taking that one out. And then there was this reveal of Quinn. And then at first I was like, okay, so this is how Quinn's going to die. Then he's going to get killed by Daryl because obviously Daryl's not going to die. But now it's actually revealed that Daryl and Quinn have to fight these four other variant walkers. So I wasn't expecting it to be four. I thought it was just going to be another one. But as soon as I, I saw that it was four, I was like, wow. And obviously we saw one of the variants sort of just explode. The other variant though... It attacked the other one. So that's what I kind of like about this here. Like, I think they actually handled a lot of this really well because the variant Walker stuff is very exciting, obviously, but there's still flaws. And I like that because they can fix these flaws for like season two and three and make it just that much more intense. So as of as of like literally right now, if those walkers, if there was a group of them, like a hundred of them, they'd probably all kill each other, right? So there needs to be, uh, it needs to be worked on more, right? So I like the fact that Daryl embarrassed Madame Genet and then the scientist and all that in this scene and, and, and Cadrone and whatever. Like, it was just, it was so cool. And I, I think that, yeah, I mean, again, I just, I so approve of this. I think the, the walker fight was just fantastic. Absolutely amazing. It finished at like eight minutes in in the episode. And I said before, like, as long as you can get like three to five minutes Standard of something this was like close to eight minutes it, it definitely like for me for a finale fight with like a walker or whatever with a couple of walkers and and you know for what it was i think it was just absolutely done so so brilliant and i think the pacing of this episode was just so great honestly i cannot wait to re-watch this whole entire season because i think the pacing is just incredible honestly just absolutely incredible and daryl even chucks the walker head at, at madame Jeanet. i love that and then the audience is even cheering for daryl too like i thought that was super cool and then madame Jeanet was just kind of like annoyed about that and was like all right i just finished it kind of thing and then that's when falou comes to the rescue and uh i just i love that i love the fact that falou was actually there because it just again it sets up so much and that's one of those things that was set up i believe in episode four right that was an episode four i think it was set up or maybe it was episode five i'm, I'm kind of getting all the episodes confused right now but definitely very cool and it actually worked out really really well so that they can actually escape and then Daryl and uh, I mean obviously first of all Quinn was sort of handcuffed to him and it's revealed that he had a walker bite and at first he's like well I should not walk her bite it was a burn and then first he's just like well you know I um it's just a burn like it's gonna be fine but then he realizes I think at some point like okay now nah, I'm actually gonna turn I think and just the whole scene there and I will say Daryl it seemed like he burnt his fingers in the beginning I could be wrong but it really seemed like it and nothing came of that. So I don't know if that's enough then. I don't know. I'm very confused in that scene. But yeah, Quinn was okay with just like, all right, cut off my hand kind of thing. And this way you can be set free. And uh, they actually did that. And Quinn actually gave his life here. Like he actually went and fought those guards. And I love the fact that, you know, just personality wise, he was just like, can you tell Isabel that I did this kind of thing? Because he just wants that recognition. He just wants her it's almost like in a manipulative way, right? Like he's just trying to get her to be like thinking of him in a certain way all the time, constantly. And he just wants to somehow, you know what I mean? And Daryl can kind of see that Daryl's just like, well, you know, like you're just, you're just trying to get her approval so much sort of thing. And I think because of what Quinn did in that moment, because he gave his life, because there is a good part to him there, you know, like there's this other stuff where he's, he uses people and stuff, but there's this good side to him there that I think Daryl recognized that. And so later on when Isabel says, oh, did he ask you to say that? He's just like, no, no, he didn't. And I love that. That's just, there's so much respect there. Like I just, yeah, you know, like Daryl has a lot of respect for Quinn in that moment because of something that he did. He actually gave his life. He actually... He didn't put up a fight. He didn't do whatever. He was just like, all right, yeah, you know what? Fine. You know, it's sort of thing. Like, we all make mistakes kind of thing. And Daryl recognized that right away and was just like, yeah. So I, I love that scene right there because that was just, again, I just, I have a lot of respect for Daryl. The whole escaping scene, though, really felt like an old spy movie. It felt like something out of James Bond, like, but like the older movies. Like, it was honestly just so cool to see that. I don't know if it was just because they were like in like this bunker kind of thing, but it really felt like that. It was just so cool. And it is revealed later on that Quinn actually is a walker and he does actually try to take out Isabel, but then obviously Laurent at that point takes him out. And uh, yeah, I mean, I guess that's sort of the story of Quinn. Like Quinn was... I guess Laurent's biological father, um, you know, he really just served a role in 
Isabel and Laurent's backstory. And I'm actually very happy that Isabel did survive because I've been mentioning it for a while. Like, I really wanted her to survive to season two because she's my new favorite character in the show. And around season four, season four, episode four, I was like, oh, are they hinting at her dying? And so around episode four or five, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm kind of predicting her death here. And then when we got the trailer for episode six, it really seemed like maybe she could die. And I was like, I'm a little concerned here. And I was so relieved by the time that actually, you know, and again, I got spoiled of this because I was about to do my Isabel death predictions video yesterday. And then I saw the teaser for, for season two. And then I saw that Isabel was in it. And I was like, I can't do this video now. Like, even if I try to pretend that I didn't know and just do this now, it's like, I can't, I can't do that. It's not authentic. Like, I, I just can't. That was sort of unfortunate because I really wanted to, to do that video again to my ideas there, but I would have been so wrong anyways. But still, Isabel also mentions that that picture that she drew in the first episode was actually a total lie like that picture uh, I mean and that's one of the things too and, and I think as of now in terms of you know is Laurent the cure and all of that there's still sort of an unknown there there's some stuff about it that is very off that is very weird for sure it's more of what he represents right like he, he really is somebody that everyone looks up to and everyone has this belief that he is the next messiah and everyone will follow him. And I think that amount of power that he has is what is very threatening to Madame Genet. And so that's, it's nice to see that he got to the nest. Like that's, that's honestly really, really cool. But before he actually got there, uh, I'm just going to pronounce his name Codrin for now until I actually learn how to properly pronounce his name. But Codrin shows up and wow, I was not expecting that. They're just sort of talking about whatever. Isabel was, you know, well, she was supposed to respond to Daryl and then she didn't. And Daryl was like, wait, what's going on? And so when he got up, Codrin was there. And then, oh man, this scene was intense. Daryl was actually like begging for his life because it wasn't necessarily, I guess, himself. It was just, it was Laurent. Like Madame Genet's uh, group there, like they were like, you have to kill Laurent first. Like I want them all to suffer kind of thing. And then you can take, like, take on Daryl kind of thing. And Codrin was just like, he was so just stressed out about it and he couldn't do it. So he takes out all of Madame Genet's guards and it was just like this almost redeeming arc for him. It was like, whoa, I was not expecting that with the character. I really was not expecting him to sort of turn like that. And I'm really wondering now in terms of who he's going to be overall, um, is he going to be on Madame Genet's side? It just doesn't seem like it at this point, but maybe he's turned into something like that, right? Like he he's not necessarily over the fact that uh, Daryl killed his brother, but there's like this respect there that he has. He's just like, you know what? You have to protect Laurent or whatever. And I don't know if it's because he sort of believes a little bit in, in Laurent as well, but there is something there where he's like, you need to take Laurent to this place sort of thing, whatever, like not, you know, like he basically just says like, we're not like, this isn't, isn't happening today kind of thing. And it's, uh, again, shocking scene, very shocking scene. I was not expecting Codrin to just you know, literally not kill them all because he could have. And Daryl, man, the acting in that scene, he's just, he's so scared. His hands shaking. He's having his hands up in the air. He's just like, please stop, 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 stop kind of thing. Right. I've never seen Daryl like that. Like, I feel like the last time he was like that was with, with Negan, like with Negan in season seven, episode one, or really the finale after Negan killed Glenn. He was just destroyed and beaten down really bad. And I don't know if Codrin being there like that sort of reminded him of that. And he was in a, in a scary moment like that. So that's why he was begging, right? Um, still, overall, really, really just crazy scene. And Codrin takes that thing of the nest and I think is, um, well, we, we see him later on with Madame Genet. And uh, yeah, Madame Genet doesn't believe him. And now it looks like Codrin's being tortured, basically. So yeah, again, we'll have to see where this goes in season two. Is he going to be on, on her side? I feel like he's going to be at, in some manner. There's just, I don't know what it was. I still don't understand why he did it. Like, why did he just let them live? It, it, was, it just felt so random. And I'm not saying it was so random in terms of it made no sense for the story. It just felt random because I just wasn't expecting it. And th there is something there where I really feel like it could be because of Laurent. Like he might actually believe in what Laurent is saying or just like everybody just saying whatever they're saying about Laurent. Like, I think that could be why. I think if that one guy said, okay, take Daryl out first, he might have. But the fact that he said, you know, gotta take out Laurent first, and there was so much pressure there, I think he was like, I'm not taking out Laurent, I'm not taking out this kid, like, it's, that's so messed up kind of thing. So that could be where there are some issues here, and so, I don't know, I feel like, as of now, I'm sensing Codrin and Daryl to be, like, a really cool, just, like, 
I don't know, I, I can see them being buddies or something at some point in the future and there being, you know, some really cool action scenes kind of thing. I could just, as of now, I can I can see it, but obviously we'll have to wait for season two. And how does Carol affect a lot of that? But we'll talk about Carol in a second. I know I haven't mentioned her a lot in this video or really at all, but we'll talk about that in a second. They do get to the nest, though. Like the whole journey here for season one, uh, they get there and there's this big welcoming party and... Uh, Lo Sang, I don't know if I'm saying his name right, but Lo Sang, I believe his name is, uh, is just incredible. Crazy good character. Really amazing character. I, I honestly, I love his character so much. He is just so, like, calm and a really great leader. And it was just, like, I loved his interactions with Daryl. Honestly, really just cool character. Like, really cool character. And also, I do want to say, Daryl and Isabel, I really feel like is a thing. I know that people are like, well, I don't know, blah, blah, blah. But I just really feel like it's a thing. They hinted at it so hard in this episode, but Daryl obviously had to go. But it just, there's certain scenes in this episode where I was like, I know Daryl feels stuff, Isabel feels stuff. They're just not saying anything right now. And I mean, I'm just going to say it right now. I don't think they're ever going to say anything. I just, I really feel like it's going to be kept like that because it's always been that way with Daryl. They'll hint at things here and there, but they will never go there. So I really feel like that's all it's going to be. So that's why to me, I'm like, I know it's never going to really officially be a thing anyways. They just sort of like to tease things here and there. But yeah, Daryl does say goodbye. And then uh, at the end, obviously he does stay, you know, he saw his grandfather's uh, grave and he just kind of felt like, you know, I, if I leave now, I'm sort of just like them, or at least just like my father, I'm leaving. If I stay here, that is something that, you know, they wouldn't have done or like his father wouldn't have done sort of thing. And so Daryl decides to stay and he actually sees Laurent, you know, uh, I guess behind him. And obviously it was more of a hallucination. It wasn't actually Laurent because Laurent was dressed just like he just like he was, I guess, when they were on their way to the nest. And, you know, by the time he left, he had a totally different outfit on sort of thing. So this is more of a hallucination scene. And I think it was just he looked at Laurent and it was like, you know what? I need to go and I need to go and be there with him. I need to be there with, you know, what I found here, because, yes, he left home, but this is sort of his new home right now. He can't leave just yet. There's just something about it where he can't leave. And then. It's sort of, you know, obviously the music in that scene really kind of reminded me of Space Junk quite a bit from uh, from The Walking Dead. Like that Space Junk to me is Rick Grimes' theme. Uh, this song here, I don't know what the song is. Maybe this is Daryl's new theme. I don't know. But then it kind of cuts to black. And then it's revealed that Carol is back. And her return was just done in the most epic way possible. Like she was just driving in an inner car and uh, just the whole reveal of this whole entire encounter here. Man, I got goosebumps when she got out of the car. Like I just wasn't like, she's just such a good character. Melissa McBride is just so fantastic. And just seeing her in that scene and she's just like, you know, I'm looking for my friend, this and that. And he's just like, I don't know who that is. And she's like, oh, really? Because you're on his bike. I was like, oh, man, like all of those small little details. Like as soon as I knew Carol was there, I was like, no matter like this biker, like he's done. There's no way he's getting out of this situation. And then obviously Carol knocks him out or whatever and then finds out more information. And then Carol actually rides away on Daryl's bike. That is so cool to me. Like, that is just honestly really incredible. And so Carol is, is on her way now. Carol's going to be going to, I guess, most likely where the, the ship was and all that in terms of all the research. And I think she's going to try to find a way to get across. And I'm curious about that, too, because how does she get across? Like, how does she actually get a ship and is able to actually get across? Because the reason why Daryl went is because he was a prisoner and uh, just all of that. I doubt Madame Genet is going to take another ship and go across, potentially. But I, that's what I'm kind of curious about. I want to know exactly what happens there. So I just, yeah, obviously a lot of that in episode one of season two, which will air next year, we're going to learn a lot more about, but uh, I'm very excited. So overall, really fantastic episode here. I think season one as a whole, I'll do a review overall, you know, and, uh, and talk about that. But I think season one was just so fantastic. And uh, I'm so happy Carol's back. Season two, like, you know, as great as season one was, Season two is going to be so much better to have Daryl and Carol reunite. Oh, I'm so excited for that. I really feel like it's going to happen at the end of episode one. We're going to see Daryl and Carol reunite. And it's going to be one of those, one of the most insane emotional scenes ever, especially because we're not going to be seeing this scene until like what late next year, probably like next summer or something like that. So it's going to be a really, really long time. And uh, it, at that point, it'll have been like how long since we've seen Carol, right? Like or Carol and Daryl together. So it's, um, yeah, just really incredible. But I'm going to leave it here. Make sure to post all your thoughts down below. Hope you guys all enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one.